Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go over how to extract text from PDFs using Python. So here in this folder I have a PDF, it's called lorem.pdf and it just contains a lot of lorem ipsum text. There's a little bit of a surprise in this text, Waldo is hiding throughout some of the pages, so we're going to try and find him throughout the PDF. For this project I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. I'm going to activate my virtual environment. If you don't have a virtual environment, that's all right. You can follow along without it. I'm going to make sure that I pip install pi pdf2. Notice the capital letters here. That's important. So we see successfully installed pi pdf2. And I'm going to update my pip, but you don't need to see that. And now let's create a script. We'll call this pi file extract.py. All right, let's make a little more space for us. Now from PyPDF2, once again, notice the capital letters, import PDF file reader. After our import, what we want to do is create a PDF file reader object. So we'll call this PDF equals PDF file reader, and then pass in the file. After that, there are two steps to extract text. Step one, grab the page or pages. We'll create a page object. We'll call this page underscore one underscore object and set that equal to pdf.getPage. Here we'll pass in the page number that we want to get. The page numbers are zero indexed, so the first page is zero. And let's print this page object just to see what it looks like. Let's save our code. We'll move down to the terminal and run our extract.py file. So here we see the page object. It's a dictionary with a bunch of different key value pairs. So here the very last one, struct parents, that's gonna be the page that we're on. So index zero or the first page. That will come in handy in just a little bit. Moving on to step two, we're going to extract the text from the page object. We're gonna save this into page underscore one underscore text, set that equal to page underscore one underscore object. So we're taking the object we just created and now extracting the text from it using the extract text method. And let's print page one underscore text to see what we get. We'll delete this other print statement. We don't need it anymore. Let's save our script and run it. All right, and compared to our page object, this looks a little more understandable, at least if you can speak Latin. <laughs> nice, now we have the text from the first page of our PDF. And let's scroll back up. Now what we're going to do is combine the text from all the pages in the PDF and save them as a text file. In order to do this, we are going to want to include from path lib import path with a capital P. And we'll say with path, capital P, pass in the file name that we want to create. If this file already exists, it's going to get written over, so we have to be careful here. We're going to open it. Mode is equal to W, which stands for write. We're going to do that as output underscore file. We're then going to create an empty string variable. We'll call that text. And then for page in pdf.pages, then for every page in our PDF, we're going to add that to our text string. So we have to make sure that we extract the text from the page because right now it's a page object. And then we will write to our output file the text using the write method on our output underscore file and passing in our text. Let's save our script and run it. And let's delete this print statement. We don't need it to print anymore. And we will look at the file that was just created. So here we see all of the text from our PDF was extracted and saved to this text file. Woo woo, we're doing awesome. And now for the moment I know you've all been waiting for, where's Waldo? We're gonna find him in our PDF. Let's first start off by creating a Waldo pages list. So this will be a list of all the pages that Waldo is found on. We'll create a for loop for page in pdf.pages. This dot pages gives us all the page objects that our PDF contains. So if there are 28 pages, there will be 28 objects. We're going to grab the page number so if you remember, the page object is a dictionary. 
So to get the page number, what we can do is call our dictionary page and then in square brackets, pass in the key of this page number. In this case, it's forward slash struct parents. That'll give us the page number or the index location of the page. If you actually want the page number, you can just add one to this. And then we'll extract the page text. We'll set that equal to page underscore text. And then here we'll check if Waldo is somewhere in the page. And then what we'll want to do is append the page number to the Waldo pages list. And then we can print our list and see what we get. Let's save our file and run it. And we found all the pages where Waldo is. They're right in this list here. All right, let's go back up to our code, get rid of this print statement. And if we wanted to save the pages that contain Waldo to a PDF, we can do that. In order to do this, we are going to need to import the PDF file writer from PyPDF2. And then just like before, we're going to want to create a PDF file reader object. This time, instead of calling it PDF, we're going to call it input underscore PDF. And then we're going to create a PDF file writer object. So the PDF file reader reads the text from the PDF and the PDF file writer writes text to the PDF. This text has to be a page object though. It can't just be any text that we want, which is a limitation of PI PDF2. However, we can also use F PDF2 if we want to create PDFs from scratch with our own words. All right, now we're going to get the text from the pages with Waldo. We're going to use a for loop for page in Waldo pages. That's the list of page numbers that we have. We're going to create a page object with the input PDF dot get page. I made a mistake here, get get page. It's just get page. And then we're going to add that page to our writer. So we create our page object with get page and then we add that object to the PDF writer. Now we're going to create a PDF with all of those pages. We'll follow a similar process that we used to create the text file by using with path, the file name of the PDF, dot open in mode WB, which stands for write in binary, as output file underscore two, and then with PDF underscore writer dot write output file underscore two. And let's fix that get get page. We'll save our file and run it. And if we open that PDF Waldo underscore pages, we see it only has the nine pages that contained Waldo in the text. And we can see that here if we just do a quick search. Waldo on page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, and page nine. All right, so that's pretty cool and everything, but what if we only wanted the sentence from the page that Waldo is in? We're going to want to import our E because we're going to be using regular expressions. And then what we're going to want to do is create an empty list so that we can store the page numbers and sentences. We'll call that empty list pages underscore sentences because it's going to have pages and sentences in it. Now let's copy and paste a little bit of code from above here. And then we'll paste it down here. We need to make a few adjustments though. Let's change this Waldo underscore pages that we're appending to and we're going to append to the pages underscore sentences, that empty list that we just created. And actually let's comment this out and figure out exactly how we're going to get the sentences that contain Waldo. We can get those sentences using the regular expressions library we just imported. And then in order to get sentences, what we can do is split on ending punctuation. So that would be a period, a question mark, or an exclamation mark. With regular expressions, all of those symbols have special meanings. So we need to escape that meaning with a backslash. So here you'll notice I have a backslash, a period, and then a space. That's so that we get rid of the period and the space at the end of the sentence. 
and then the pipe operator. In regular expressions, the pipe operator symbolizes or. When we put it all together, what this is saying is we want to split on the period space or the question mark space or the exclamation mark space. We also want to include the string that we want to split on. In this case, it's the page text that we just extracted above. Let's print this out so that we can see exactly what we're getting. We'll save our file, run our script, and we see a lot of words. But if we scroll to the top, we can see that each page has been split into a list and that each sentence on that page is now an item in the list. So we are getting these weird little backslash ends that we'll want to remove. And now that we know that that's working, we don't need to print it anymore. We can save it into a variable called sentence underscore list. So this will be a list of all our sentences and we'll create it using a list comprehension. So sentence for sentence in our split text. And we want to do that if Waldo is in the sentence. Oopsie daisies, this should be Waldo as a string and then in for a keyword and sentence as in the sentence that we're using in our for loop. And let's print out sentence list so we can see what it's looking like. Then save and run our script. So as we would expect, we're getting a bunch of lists. We do see these backslash ends, but good news, Waldo is in each of those sentences. So let's get rid of those backslash ends. We can do that by using the replace method. We'll replace backslash n with an empty set of quotation marks. Awesome, it looks like that worked for us. What would be nice is if we included the page number that the string is located on. So we'll include page number, we'll turn that into a string, and then we'll concatenate it with page. If you're wondering why I'm not using an F string here, it's because of that backslash N. F strings don't like backslashes. Excellent. That looks just right. Now let's get rid of these lists. We just want to return the string. So what we can do is return the first element in those lists, which is the string that we're looking for. Let's save it, run it. And there we go. That is what we want. Let's go ahead and append it to our pages sentences list. And now what we can do to create our text is join each of those sentences that's in our list with a backslash n. And what this is going to do is add each of those sentences onto a new line. Sadly, with PyPDF2, we can't create a new PDF from scratch using our own text. What we can do is use FPDF2. I have some tutorials you can check out. But for our purposes, we will just add that text to a text file just like we did above with path, the name of the file we want to create. And it looks like I put .txt rather than txt, but it still worked, but maybe just put txt. And then open mode equals w as let's say output file three and then write to output file three the text. After that, then we'll save our file, run it, and open our text file. And there we go, here's Waldo. We have the pages and the sentences, but there's one little problem. We're getting this question mark here. That question mark should have been turned into a new sentence, if you remember based on a regular expression. I spent about 10 minutes trying to figure out why this wasn't working. I'm still not exactly sure what we did should have worked, but in order to solve the problem in our regular expression, we can add backslash capital W plus instead of the space. And then we will get exactly what we're looking for. 